Okay, so in this video we're going to discuss more examples of uh, motivating problems in calculus of variations. Uh, so in this video we are going to discuss uh, the problem of Brachistochrome. Uh, so Brachistochrome problem. Problem. Okay, uh, so this in fact actually I think um, is the first uh, the first um, the first time that a problem in calculus of variations was ever conceived uh, was ever considered, and I believe it was solved by Isaac Newton and Leibniz and others, and it's all to do uh, with gravity. Um, so the problem is this: uh, take um, take two points. Uh, so imagine uh, a vertical plane. So uh, let's say this is the floor. And because it obviously it's a gravity problem, uh, we're just viewing a two-dimensional plane rather than three dimensions, and we've got a ball or something that is going to fall down. Uh, and basically, I have two points, a point A up here, so I could, you know, I could, again, I could um, do, uh, put, uh, I could put a coordinate system on the two-dimensional plane, uh, the Cartesian coordinate system, I could ascribe to every point uh, a vector of R2, uh, Y, and then we can do algebra on it, which is a very powerful tool. Um, okay, uh, so you have two points, A and B. Uh, so let's say A has coordinates X1 and Y1, keep forgetting to put that comma, and B has coordinates X2 and Y2. Um, so, uh, this is the problem. I have a ball, so here's a ball, and I want the ball to go from place A to place B. So I want to, like, put, effectively, a slide. So imagine a children's slide. I want to put a children's slide between A and B that the ball can roll down. So the ball is going to roll down here. And the problem is, to find the path, the path between A and B, the slide, if you like, uh, from A to B, Find the path, the path from A to B, which minimizes the time that the ball will take to descend. Minimizes the time that the ball will take to descend. Will take to descend. Now, of course, we're going to assume that our slide is extremely, extremely smooth, so we'll ignore, you know, problems of uh, friction. Uh, so, just ignoring problems of friction, what is the quickest, um, the, the path that will give us the quickest time of descent from A uh, to B? Uh, so, uh, again, uh, we have a function. Uh, which maps, uh, let's parameterize this path from A to B. So again, we'll parameterize it in terms of the interval 0 to 1, which is going to map us into R2. Uh, so it's going to take each point of this interval and map it onto a point in R2, and that will be the path. Uh, and of course, we should take 0 to the point uh, x1, y1, x1, y1, and we should take 1 uh, to the point x2, y2. Uh, so those are our boundary conditions. And uh, apart from that, you can go wherever you like. And uh, we just want to know what is the path uh, that will minimise the time of descent of the ball. Um, so what we need to do is work out how much time is it going to take, uh, given a path. So let's say we are given a path. We are given a path. Given a path. How could we work out? How can we work out? We work out how long it will take the ball to descend. Work out how long, oh dear, how long it will take the ball to descend, how long it will take the ball to, de take the ball to descend. And I shouldn't be using this big pen, it's difficult to read what I'm writing. Um, okay, let's try this red pen. Nope, that's gone. Um, not that. Um, Not that. Uh, it's just the paper's going too quickly if I use this big pen. Right, um, so back up to the picture and let's try and work this out from the picture. So we want to know, given a path uh, that we have, uh, which is mapping our interval 0, 1 onto this plane, how long will it take uh, the ball to descend? Well, firstly, we know... Um, we know uh, to simplify... Um, 
Uh, no, okay, so we know uh, certain things. We know uh, what the strength feel, uh, what the um, free fall of acceleration is for gravity, which is going to be this little constant g. Um, we also know, uh, given the y position, we know what speed the ball is going at. So if you tell me what y position the ball is at, I can work out uh, what speed the ball must be going at because uh, I can just use uh, conservation of energy. Because I'm saying, I'm assuming there is no friction, so there's no loss of energy um, to heat. Uh, so uh, the change in the potential energy of the ball must therefore equal the change in kinetic energy. So m g uh, uh, times the well, it needs to be times the height that it has descended from. That's how much gravitational potential energy it has lost from going from y1 to y. So let's say this is a point y, and it started off at level y1. Um, so h is going to be y1 minus y, so we'll get rid of that. So that is the amount of gravitational potential energy, where m is the mass of the ball, g is the uh, a constant approximately equal to 10, and uh, y1 minus y2 is the height. And of course, we have to make sure these are in the correct units. m is going to be in kilograms if this is going to be about 10, and y and the height is going to be in meters. Um, so this is approximately is going to be equal to half m v squared, where velocity v is your velocity in meters per second. Uh, so if I just rearrange this, I get that firstly we'll cancel the m's. So 2g y one minus y uh, is equal to y is equal to v squared. So if I square root that, I get what the velocity is. Now, um, so that's going to be useful because now all we need to know is so we know what your velocity is given your um, your y position. So all we need to say is we need to we're trying to work out. Remember what we're trying to work out. We're trying to work out how much time it takes to get from here to here. Well, we can. We have a parameterization which is awkward because I've called previously this parameterization T. Uh, now, what I will call this parameterization is S, um, for reasons you'll see now. Because I'm going to define let T, uh, let big T, uh, be uh, the time. Well, let firstly it be a, let uh, T be a function of S, of S. So basically, I'm saying um, we have this parameterization, uh, which is ascribing for every value of s in 0 to 1, it's giving you a point in the two-dimensional plane. So it's uh, it's plotting out this path. So every point on this two on this path has an s value corresponding to it. Um, so we have our interval, let's draw it over here. We have our interval 0 to 1 uh, being mapped onto here. Um, so 0 goes to there, 1 goes to there, and this is the interval, and this is the parameter here, this is the s parameter. So for every value of s, you get a value here, so I will define t to be a function of s, uh, such that um, t is the cumulative amount of time, t is the cumulative amount of time that has elapsed, cumulative amount of time that has elapsed, amount of time that has elapsed. Uh, elapsed. Okay, um, so um, I hope you can see that. Um, so um, basically, I've got an s value along all of this path, and now what I'm ascribing is another value here, which is t. So I'm mapping effectively the path, uh, although I'm t mapping it in terms of what the s value is on every uh, at every point along the path. Um, and I'm mapping. I'm giving each value, each point along the path a value of t, which is how long did the ball take to get from a to there. Okay, um, so we can ask what is the derivative of this function. Uh, so I need to go down, I'm afraid, which means we lose the picture. So I can ask what is the derivative of this function, dt dt, uh, ds rather. I want to know what is the derivative of t with respect to s. So in terms of the picture, which I'll redraw here, we have this. I have this interval 0 to 1. Here, which is being mapped onto this onto this uh, path here. So this is the point A. This is the point B. And I am now mapping this effectively onto uh, onto onto another for, onto another real variable, which is time. And A is going to zero. And we don't know what B is going to. We want to know what B is going to is the uh, question. Uh, so B is going to some mystery value, which we would like to know, which we might call Y. 
Okay, so what is the derivative of t with respect to s? So we're saying go forward a tiny amount ds. So take a value s, go forward a tiny amount ds. So this is this is actually, of course, f of s, this point here, because uh, you have to map s onto um, what it is in the plane. This is f of s plus um, ds. And what we want to know is um, what's dt ds going to be? So what is the difference between the time function here and the time function here? Uh, well, all we need to know is how long is it going to take to cross that little um, length there. So we need to know what is the length of that, and we need to know how fast is it going. Well, we know how fast it's going, um, so um, so we can work out um, how, well, well. We can work out uh, how long it's going to take to cross that uh, little bit. Um, so uh, dtds then. Um, so. Uh, dt ds is um, equal to, we need to know what is the distance of that little thing. Uh, well, it's going to be, uh, we, it's exactly the same as in the previous problem. We've got a path and we want to know what the length is. So in the previous video, I showed you that that was going to be uh, dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. Okay, so that is our distance. Uh, well, it will, it, Okay, no, and um, I've made a mistake because I parameterized it in the same way that I have parameterized the previous one. So, in fact, the change in this little um, in this little um, bit is going to be the square root of dx ds uh, squared plus dy ds squared. Um, so, because I'm just changing the parameter, I, I renamed the parameter because I wanted to call this t. Uh, but, so, I didn't want to confuse you by making you think that the parameter was time. Uh, we're just parametering it arbitrarily. Um, so, um, that's why I changed the variable. And the ch this will change is ds. And we will divide that by the velocity at which it is going at that point um, here. So, at the po so, velocity as a function of s, you'll divide it by. And basically, um, that is the amount of time uh, that it will take to cross that tiny little interval, and you want to divide that by ds. So that is your change in time. So you'll just divide it by ds, and you'll cancel off that. So you get that dt ds is going to be equal to um, uh, this thing here. So if you take the antiderivative of that, um, so uh, we could say the indefinite integral of that, uh, and you'll get some uh, inter uh, ds and you'll get some additional constant and of course what we want to say is we want to set that so that um, so that at um, s is equal to zero t is equal to zero um, so then uh, what we'll do is um, we'd evaluate this overall thing that you get uh, which is the function t um, so you'd address the integration constant so that so that um, t of zero is equal to zero and then what you do is you just work out what is t of 1 and you'd be able to work out what y is here. Okay, and in principle you can work out what the velocity is at a function of, as a function of s. Um, and I'm just struggling at, uh, for a moment. I don't know whether it will be given by this formula. That is how much velocity it should have. The problem is what direction is that going to be in? Um, is it going to be, is that, hmm, where else would it go? No, I think that must be the, the velocity there. Uh, so basically, um, the, I think that must be the velocity function that we'd have to stick in here. Of course, we'd have to make it a function of s, so what you'd have to do is, instead of putting in y here, you would have to put, um, you would have to take f inverse of y. So, um, that would be difficult if you, um, uh, if you didn't have an exact, if you didn't have a what, if it wasn't one to one, which of course it usually will be. So basically, what we're going to, um, of course, the s is being that mapped onto a value of r two, uh, but you hopefully in most situations, what's going to happen is that for each value of y, there is only one point in s which would have been mapped onto that. So yes, we don't care what the value of x was, so just find me the value of s uh, which mapped onto that value of y, and that's what I mean by f inverse of y here. Of course, of course, it, it's mapping it onto a pair of points, 
but if there's only one x point which does have the value y, then of course you can take the inverse of that. If it's something, you know, that looks like this, then you'll have more problems with that, and you'll have to be far more careful about how you define um, this function down here, and you'll probably have to do the integral in lots of different pieces. Okay, so that is the problem of Brachistochrome, uh, and again, it's a problem that we will see how to solve uh, using the uh, calculus of variations.